Today we're going to be looking at how mathematics won gold at the Olympics. In 2014, Andrew Wilson sat in on Dr. Ken Ono's number theory class at Emory University in Atlanta. Wilson was double majoring in applied mathematics and physics, but he was actually also on the Emory University swim team. Ono took an interest in Wilson's swimming and he himself said, we thought that together, maybe we could use our interest in mathematics to help improve as a swimmer. And Wilson actually went on to earn a gold medal at the Tokyo 2021 Olympics. Now, fast forward to 2019, where Ono moved to the University of Virginia and connected with Todd DeSorbo, the swim coach there. The partnership there flourished, so much so that the women's swim team, including Kate Douglas, they just started dominating swimming competitions. They weren't just winning, they were winning as a result of some serious data analysis and mathematics. And in Paris 2024, Douglas actually won the gold medal. Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at that mathematics that have helped swimmers go on to the Olympic stage. Okay, so it turns out that the same equations that govern our entire solar system also govern the way that swimmers move within water, and that is Newton's laws of motion. Let's start with Newton's first law, which says every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. Now, this is the reason that swimmers have to perform strokes in the first place, because when they dive into the swimming pool, they experience a drag, and so eventually they would come to rest, and that drag force is the force that Newton is talking about. So that's Newton's first law. Now we move on to Newton's second law, which hopefully you remember from school days, is force equals mass times acceleration. This law affects the swimmers themselves. Forces of various magnitudes and directions are creating accelerations of various magnitudes on the body in their respective directions. So the drag force that we mentioned when the swimmer first dives into the swimming pool, this is accelerating the swimmer against their intended motion, while their kicks and front strokes is accelerating them forward. We can see this as an optimization problem in itself. We want to maximize the forces that accelerate the swimmer towards the finish line. There we mentioned acceleration, and this plays a huge role in Ken Ono's work in improving swimmers' performance, and that is down to accelerometers, which we'll get onto in just a moment. But before we talk about that, let's look at Newton's third law. Newton's third law says, to any action, there is always an opposite and equal reaction. So as a swimmer pushes in the water when they stroke forward, they're feeling that same force back from the water itself. And it's this reactive force that swimmers try to perfect when swimming. We've just covered Newton's laws of motion, which, as we've seen, are fundamental in mathematics and physics. And if you're interested in learning more about Newton's laws of motion, or you just want to brush up on your mathematics skills, then I'd highly recommend checking out Brilliant. Brilliant is a platform where you learn by doing. With thousands of courses in mathematics, as well as science, data science, programming, and even AI, each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving which allows you to play with concepts. And this is a method that is proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lectures. As a bit of a tech nerd myself, one of my favourite courses is Brilliant's course on how large language models work. To try out this course, as well as everything else that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Ellie or click on the link in the description and you'll also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So that was Newton's third law, but we now cover the enemy to swimmers, and that is known as the drag force. This is determined by Bernoulli's equation for pressure in a fluid, which is pressure P equals force F divided by unit area A. Now the drag force for an object in a fluid can be written as dynamic pressure, which is given by this equation here seen on screen, where rho is the density of the fluid, A is the area of the object in motion, V is the velocity, and C subscript D is its drag coefficient. Reducing this drag is fundamental to success at the Olympics, something that I found even crazier on top of not just using mathematics, but designing swimsuits to allow for reducing this drag. The suits in the 2024 Olympics were carbon fibre reinforced to help reduce this drag, 
And Ono himself said that for some of the women, it could take up to half an hour to actually get into these swimsuits. And it just shows the commitment to do anything to shave off fractions of seconds when competing. Something to comment on as well in terms of the drag is swimmers will do anything to reduce this drag in order to go faster and get better times. And something that I didn't really think too much about was the typical build of a swimmer. So it's known as a swimmer's build and it's typically the broad shoulders and the slim waist. And I don't know whether this was just me, but I just thought that was because of swimming, that was where the muscles generally were, you know, enhanced. And so I just thought that was the typical build of a swimmer. And when you swim, those are the parts of your body that naturally build muscle. And that might still be the case, but swimmers actually train specific parts of their body to make them more streamlined and therefore reduce that drag. And so they essentially work on, you know, broad shoulders and muscle on their shoulders and then really slim waists in order to reduce that drag even further. And so I just found it so incredible how you watch sports on TV or, you know, live and there's so many things that go into the success of Olympians and just athletes in general that I think often get overlooked. And so this video has been really cool for me to do because there's just so much more to it than what we probably ever think. We've looked at some of the fundamental laws in mathematics that help improve swimmers' performance. But let's take a look at how Ono and his team were actually able to use that mathematics to improve swimmers' times. Since 2015, a team of researchers at Emory University and the University of Virginia have been combining the physics of Newton's laws with mathematical modelling and optimization. Now, the idea here is to use sensitive accelerometers fitted with internal gyroscopes and accurate directional force meters. Athletes then do a variety of different tests with these on and the collected data are used to influence what is known as a digital twin of the athlete. Digital twins aren't just specific to swimming, they're actually used in a variety of different industries. I know having previously worked in the space industry, you can get a digital twin of a physical object, say a satellite that is up in space, that perhaps you want to perform a maneuver to, you want to move it. And instead of changing the actual position of the physical satellite that costs millions to get up in space already, you can take the digital twin of that satellite, which is essentially a simulation really. You can perform that maneuver on the simulation to see what the outcome would be. And if the outcome was successful, then you can perform it to the physical object up in space. So digital twins are really, really cool. And something I found even cooler when reading the research behind how they use digital twins in swimming was that basically you can take a swimmer and you can record them, but for video data, it records 24 frames per second. The sensors that they used on the swimmers actually capture movements and directional generated force 512 times per second, which again, I find crazy. Okay, so they've collected all of this data and they've created this digital twin of the swimmer, but what do they actually do with this digital twin? It allows the swimming teams to make recommendations that immediately impact the performance of the swimmer. So they are able to identify an athlete's comparative strengths and weaknesses without actually having to hold a real life race. And thanks to Newton's equations and the acceleration data, they are able to predict the times the athletes would save two after a specific change. And this is huge because it might be that they noticed that if you change a certain, you know, your body position, for example, this would shave off this number of seconds. And if you changed moving your arm a specific way, this would save this many seconds. And then they can prioritise which saves the most time. And again, fractions of seconds really matter when it comes to competitive swimming. In the paper Swimming in Data, we see this figure, which is of Lily King in Streamline, and we also see this figure, which is Kate Douglas in Streamline. Now, what they were able to identify is that Kate Douglas's head was tilted slightly further down, which in itself produced extra turbulence and drag. Her digital twin was able to pick up this flaw and as a result, the team were able to analyse it further and essentially shave off 0.15 seconds off her time, which is huge in competitive swimming. In the paper, we also see this figure, which is a comparison of the digital twins of two elite breaststrokers executing the first phase of a pullout, which we can't actually see as fans because it takes place underwater. Now, the pullout phase consists of a powerful push off the wall followed by a streamlined glide and it ends with a single dolphin kick. 
Now, when we look at the graph, you'll notice that the orange swimmer has a fantastic streamline as it reflects almost no deceleration. But we can see that the dolphin kick of the orange swimmer isn't quite as powerful as the blue swimmer. And so in terms of strategy, the orange swimmer might consider delaying the execution of their dolphin kick earlier. And it's things like this when working with digital twins that allowed the swimmers to shave off fractions of seconds that overall meant that they could then improve their performance and go on to win gold at the Olympics. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for some more videos on mathematics in sports and I'll see you all in the next one.